Swiftly and a twelve to more, but four hundred to go. Valakton the inside just let escorted. On the outside is Send Me an Angel Ever Late, Your Lady Kushinda. Miss Buffett was out deep from Sound of Drums into the straight, escorted and Send Me an Angel the leader. Over Miss Buffett on the outside, the rider in trouble, followed by Kushinda and Light, Your Lady who can't win. It's Send Me an Angel in front at the hundred from Kushinda. Miss Buffett and escorted. Send Me an Angel in front, hard ridden. Kushinda is closing. Send Me an Angel in front, but at one. Send Me an Angel one and neck over Kushinda. Back on more familiar ground at Morfordville in South Australia on February 7, Send Me an Angel was sent out a 7-2 equal favourite with Jim Courtney in the saddle for the South Australian Jockey Club's Australasian Oaks. A jam-packed field as they race before the turn to the 600, Amelia under full pressure, being joined by Sean's sister, Combituate Lady, the boulder goes up out very deep and there's another one with them there too as they come before the turn, that's uh, Dame Vengeance and in that pack was on the inside, Send Me an Angel getting away from the rail, Happy View looking to get through, Flaming Wonder is now starting to work up out deep and she's going to the leaders in a twinkling, Sean's sister headed off now by Flaming Wonder and also Shackle and further back Evandale Star though, followed further back by Reside and send me an angel as they work down it's going to be a tight go yet again Evandale Star getting up on the inside with them flaming wonder and send me an angel is battling on and so is Shackle Shackle grabbed by send me an angel in Evandale Star and send me an angel a bonnie filly wins the Swept Oaks that exceptionally strong performance was matched a month later at Flemington on this occasion that man Clark is back in the saddle last with Borna Lady out wide and English Tam at the rear they're homeward bound 500 metres to go Princess Calabrina being tackled by Fashion Fun the outside a couple of lengths away is Send Me an Angel under pressure Glory Days Shackle asks for the big run spotting the leaders five lengths start and not responding and then Flaming Wonder and Laylam they go by the 200 and Fashion Fun is holding sway over Send Me an Angel Laylam Flaming Wonder and Shackle here goes Send Me an Angel after Fashion Fun and then Laylam and Flaming Wonder Send Me an Angel does miss Send Me an Angel first give it to Flaming Wonder Send Me an Angel is the best representative to date, sired by Belcrest stud Sir Ivor Stallion Gilgood, one of the best two-year-old colts in England in 1980. The bounding away story was more like a saga. This grey filly with the constitution of steel and the heart of a lion was found to be suffering from a virus after her sixth magic flute in the Thousand Guineas back in October. Trainer Tommy Smith sent her to the spelling paddock before setting her for the Melbourne autumn. After disappointing runs in the William Reed Stakes and the Australian Guineas, bounding away returned to her home city and showed a glimpse of her true form when a desperately unlucky second to Captivan in the Group 2 surround stakes at Warwick Farm. After that, Smith chose the $200,000 Orlando Classic for Bounding Away. Despite the fact she was competing against older mares, Bounding Away was asked to shoulder 57.5 kilos. Palmyra Bay, March Akita, and then Canny Lass and Playful Princess, and Canny Lass and Playful Princess will have to be super mares to win from there. On the turn now, and Captivan led wide out Dance Hall Girl on the corner, then Shinakima followed by Deedle on the fence, just blooming, Bounding Away behind those, followed by Magic Flute and Atlantic Mission down the outside is running on strongly Captivan the leader at the 200 mark from Just Blooming, Atlantic Mission on the outside bounding away behind those Atlantic Mission and Just Blooming are fighting about half an hour straight, bounding away getting through near the fence, it's bounding away bursting through on the inside rail she's coming home, the better little bounding and bounding away, got up to win the Orlando Dinky You've already seen the next two races contested by bounding away, she gave two marvellously courageous displays for Mick Dittman against the Colts and the Rose Hill Guineas and the AJC Derby but here is the race she richly deserved to bound away with, the $200,000 Group 1 AJC Oaks. Evandale Star led the Oaks field about two lengths on appreciation, bounding away, getting a dream run third. In fourth spot on the outside, Dungarvan, then Adrianette, show him Sadie, coming into it. Further back in the field, round the world, now being extricated from the ruck. Blazing Fontaine is dropping out of it. Our star line starting to unwind a long run. Our cue is under heavy pressure, followed by Counterfeit Coin, Irish Maiden, and then Magdalene, Laylam and Bo Sprite last as they turn the corner. Into the straight, Evandale Star, the leader, bounding away on the outside, is cruising up, had a peep over the left shoulder, round the world is close handy and here comes our star line down the outside but bounding away, kicked, bounding away, full of running at the 200 mark, clear of round the world and our star line under the whip and struggling now, bounding away as well, clear with 100 to go, she's got the Oaks one, round the world boxing on strongly but the champion Philly bounding away, wins another big one, bounding away, beat round the The HAC world. Oaks was bounding away's ninth win from 19 starts and swelled her earnings to almost one and a half million dollars, moving her her into second place behind Kingston Town as the all-time leading stakes earner in Australia. 
The Oaks was her third Group 1 win for the season and her sixth overall. An amazing record racked up by a truly amazing filly. 25 days later, the fillies who provided the AJC Oaks Quinella were pitted against each other again for half as much prize money in the Group 1 Queensland Oaks. ...forces round the world to go four wide as she starts her run. Duffy sticking to the inside on counterfeit coin and then Deborah Curie and Raymond Royale. Into the straight, Finesse Bell dashed up on the outside of Gossamer Wings and she's hit the lead. Now round the world's up on the outside are bounding away and the favourite's in a pocket at the moment. Finesse Bell is the leader, 300 metres to go. Round the world into second place. Dittman's gone for the whip on bounding away and she's struggling 200 metres out, round the world loomed up on the outside, she's got a nose in front of Finesse Bell who kicks again they're clear of bounding away, round the world just in front of Finesse Bell, round the world a neck in front of Finesse Bell and round the world has won the Oaks, has beaten Finesse Bell. Round the world's win was just under a season too late for Sea Anchor, who sired the champion Red Anchor and a host of other major stakes winners from his base at Hau Nui Farm near Auckland. Sea Anchor was purchased and transferred to Blandford Park, New South Wales for the 86 breeding season, but died of a ruptured aorta while covering his very first mare on Australian soil. Just 50 minutes after the Queensland Oaks, the South Australian Jockey Club conducted the Group 1 South Australian Oaks. The leader still Dame Vengeance making a cheeky bid for victory, led by two. In second placing, Damzella's Ellis after it now gains a length on it quickly. A length away to Happy View coming away from behind them. Then Marma leader flaming wonder. Sean Sisters made good ground and the others are gone, headed by Combituate Lady. Well back, show them Sadie and last of all, Kingdom Ruler homeward bound as they swing 4.50 out. And on the inside, Dame Vengeance has been beaten off by Damzella in turn happy view comes at it and marmalita marmalita wider out off the track about seven horses from the rail goes up to get on turns with happy view and damsel flaming wonder's got plenty of room to get between them if she's good enough and further back sean sister four chances only in the group one south australian oaks with marmalita the gray going to the lead in second position giving a bit of ground on the inside damsel headed now by flaming wonder marmalita in front though she's going to win the oaks and the gray filly gets home marmalita a length on the line flaming wonder how ironic that both the Queensland and South Australian Oaks winners should provide their respective sires with classic winners in the season of their sire's demise. Marmalita is by Wolverton, a Wolver Hollow horse who stood at historic New Zealand nursery Trelawney Stud until his death just two months before the Oaks. Well that completes a very hectic classic scene around Australia and New Zealand. And Bill, just before we change direction and look at the major juvenile races, I recommend that punters looking to the 1987 Cups doubles review the distance classics very closely. In recent years, those three-year-old staying races have found a host of cup winners and cup place getters. Uh, you know, the likes of Trista, Gurners Lane, Just a Dash, Al Sophia, Salamander, Bounty Hook. You know, Bill, the list goes on. It's your country racing too in Bendigo at the Bet365 Golden Mile Race Day, Saturday, April 13. There's gold panning and live entertainment. Celebrate the best of Bendigo with city racing in a country atmosphere. Adult GA, $20. Umbrella packages from $325. All-inclusive marquees from $129. What's your country racing? Book now at country.racing.com forward slash Bendigo. Speaking about classic performers, remember the great classic crop of 1982-83 when we did the very first edition of Australasian Racing Year? Ultimately the best of them was Grosvenor, who won three Group 1 races and was retired to Fieldhouse Stud in New Zealand. But as a two-year-old, Grosvenor had to share the headlines with Melbourne's brilliant cult Rancher and Sydney's giant chestnut Masque. It was fitting that these three great horses should have their first two-year-olds clashing in the same season so that their great rivalry could continue. Now, to start the ball rolling, Ian Craig, let's get your idea of the AJC Breeders' Plate. Well, Will, the Breeders' Plate must surely have the ultimate irony, with the three favourites being sons of Mas K, Rancher and Grosvenor. Respectively, I speak of Mays K, Country Club and Omnicore. The Cummings-trained Omnicore missed the start badly from a wide barrier, 
while Mays K went straight to the front. Began well, and so did Champagne Party, and Mr. Shusha showing speed, and there's uh, Wonga Chief speeding through to take on the leading horses. Uh, True Coppers going with it, but look at Doff the Cap and Mays K, and soon after inside the 800, Doff the Cap is joined by Mays K along the rails, and then Wonga Chief Country Club is moving through along the rails, then True Copper, and they're followed by I'm Ready and High Flight, and then Star Marani followed by Hot Action off the track, and then Champagne Party well back, followed by Nixon, a long way Omnicore, and they're followed by Mighty Willem. Mnemonic has dropped out uh, with uh, Pot Rero dropping out next to last, and Mr. Shusha's tailing the field. Mace K taken on by Doff the Cap as they mount the rise, and Doff the Cap has joined Mace K. Uh, the rider flicking at Mace K, it's finding plenty on the inside of Doff the Cap. Uh, Omnicore is racing home well, then Nixon, and they're followed by I'm Ready and High Flight, but Mace K has dropped Doff the Cap, who's fanning deep on the track and Mays K given a flick with the whip had shot away. Omnicore's coming after it, but Mays K has beaten Omnicore. In after that race, Omnicore went to Melbourne for the Maribyrnong Plate, Country Club went for a spell, and Mays K became a short-priced favourite for Sydney's major spring two-year-old event, the Group 2 Silver Slipper Stakes. The racecourse discussion, however, centred around the big Sir Tristram cult marauding, reputed to be the best youngster in the Brian Mayfield Smith stable. Onto the course proper, 700 out, and Mays K slipped away by a length and a half to Dream Faith on the outside of Judy Ann. Two lengths away is uh, Marauding on the outside, a special finish, a gap to Y Lodge, Regiment Hard Ridden, then Lily Antoinette and well back Wangaratta Red Express, Golden Drake followed by Mnemonic Mighty Willem and Empire State last of all. Into the straight past the 400, Mays K the leader, the filly Judy Ann on the outside in hot pursuit, followed by Dream Faith, Regiment starting to run on well, and then special finish at the 200, Mays K kicked his well clear, special finish getting into second place, further out Marauding Mays K the leader with 100 to go special finish and Marauding won't pick him up, Marauding on the outside is rapidly overhauling Mays K the post will loom up just in time and Well Bill the judge gave it to Mays K but most of us left Rose Hill that day believing we had seen a real star of the future Marauding? Indeed so Marauding a week after the Silver Slipper, the VRC conducts Australia's richest spring two-year-old, the Maribyrnong Plate, a race which boasts winners of the calibre of Vane, Biscay, Baguette, Star Shower, Blazing Saddles and, of course, Rancher. This year, the Maribyrnong Plate was unusual because the most brilliant of the pre-season trial winners, Rancho Ruler, was contesting the race at his very first start. Down towards the 600 and Proven Vela about a length to Rancho Ruler. Two and a half lengths to Miami Vice. Uh, Omnicore being hard ridden back behind them and then Bold Sculptor under the whip and Lord Tiamo at the rear. 400 to go, Proven Vela and Rancho Ruler. They've cleared away. Rancho Ruler's going well on the outside. Two and a half lengths, Miami Vice and Omnicore going to the inside. But 300 to go, Rancho Ruler's taken the lead. It's got the upper hand of Proven Vela. A long gap, Miami Vice and then Omnicore. Rancho Ruler first up in a Maribyrnong plate. He knew what he was doing, Marconi. It's going to walk in. Rancho Ruler wins by about three or four lengths. Proven Vela second. Perth Omnicore hosts Australia's first Group 1 juvenile event of the racing season. Now keep your eye on the God's Walk filly, Neo Classic. She's not hard to spot, she's the one in Robert Sangster's colours and a clear last shortly after leaving the barrier. And racing, loan value wide began well. Neo Classic missed it by about two. Tell me tomorrow, jumped away fast over Golden Unicorn and Magic Partner. Golden Unicorn, the leader, got away a length and a half from Tell Me Tomorrow, Joy of the Jungle, followed by Shady Lagoon, Neo Classic and My Judy, but Golden Unicorn, race three and fun at the hundred from Tell Me Tomorrow, Joy of the Jungle, followed by Neo Classic and My Judy, but it's all over. Golden Unicorn's got the Caracatta sold up. A great fight for Golden second Unicorn third. is by Jevington, a Todman stallion who raced successfully for Melbourne trainer Angus Armanasco in the early 70s. Jevington has been a most successful stallion in the West, siring over 130 individual wins. Back in Melbourne, the premier race for two-year-olds is the $350,000 Blue Diamond Stakes, sponsored again this year by Merv Brown's Hang 10 Company. After a slashing first up fourth against the older sprinters in the Group 1 Lightning Stakes at Flemington, Maribyrnong Plate winner Rancho Ruler was sent out favourite at 5-2. Pre-race riding engagements were the popular subject of conversation in the week leading up to the Blue Diamond, with Michael Clark preferring Abcos National Stakes winner Karpstad to the unbeaten filly Midnight Fever. Jim Courtney was engaged for Midnight Fever by trainer Colin Hayes. Imagine Clark's horror when Karpstad was a race morning scratching after pricking a hoof. Imagine his delight when late on Saturday morning he picked up the ride on Rancho Ruler, 
because Darren Gauchy had a nasty fall at track work. And then imagine how he felt when Rancho Ruler was in front with 200 metres to run. Racing. Right aspect began very quickly in the centre and is one of the early leaders in the race. Uh, getting away quite well too over on the inside. Proven Vellas racing up towards them as they settle down and Rancho Ruler over on the outside. On the corner, Proven Vella and Rancho Ruler. A length and a half clear. On the outside, right aspect, Impus Era. Midnight Fever is making its run. Rancho Ruler is going very well though. It's got Proven Vella beaten out wide on the track now. Midnight Fever He's getting anxious on Rancho Ruler. Midnight Fever's racing to it on the outside. Jimmy Courtney riding for dear life. He's hit the front on the Philly Midnight Fever. Just in front of Rancho Ruler twining. And Midnight Fever's going to win the Blue Diamond by two lengths to Rancho Ruler. Third Midnight Fever Midnight. was one of the fillies who contributed to New Haven Park's Luskin Star having his best season ever. Midnight Fever added to the deeds of Mother Duck, Postage Jew and Shackle. Carpstead soon recovered and the Hayes stable declared him fit to take his place in the Group 1 VRC Sires Produce Stakes at Flemington on March 9. With Michael Clark naturally required for Carpstead, trainer Jim Marconi had to find yet another rider for his talented Rancho Ruler and quickly settled for the accomplished horseman Gary Murphy. The light goes on, away they go. Caught them beautifully too. Twining was the first to get going from Mighty Deer. Uh, Carpstad's booting up on the inside of them from Bronx Bomber. Rancho Ruler being ridden behind in fifth place from Spacecraft. Celtic Spirit around the outside. Swift invite. Ma Wong back at the rear with Mount Buller. 100 out, a length to Carpstad. There's been no pressure on. Bronx Bomber looking for the run. Mighty Deer, Rancho Ruler's badly snoogered at the moment in about sixth placing. At the 400 and Twining, a half length to Carpstad is still going pretty. There followed then on the outside, Mighty Deer, Rancho Ruler with nowhere to go. Carpstad got to the lead, Mighty Deer out after it. Rancho Ruler pulled out wide, but Carpstad shot clear from Mighty Deer. Rancho Ruler's running on on the outside. Carpstad in front, Rancho Ruler can't get to it. Carpstad holding the lead and Carpstad's won it. Uh, nearly a link to Rancho Ruler. Carpstad represents the ultimate inbreeding in this part of the world. His dam, 8 Carat, is a half-sister to champion European sprinting filly, Habipti, as well as to the most promising broodmare, Great Clare. As we'll see later, Karpstad, destined to stand at Windsor Park Stud New Zealand, was not the only Group 1 winner to represent 8 Carat this season. After the Blue Diamond, everything seems to point towards the Golden Slipper Stakes, a race worth a cool million dollars. Ian, every Sydney sider is particularly proud of their Golden Slipper. Spot on, Bill, yes, so true. Of all the Golden Slippers I've called, undoubtedly Luskin Star in 1977 was the most brilliant winner, but this year's was probably the most exciting. As you know, the Sydney Turf Club run a series of lead-up races, each over the Golden Slipper distance of 1,200 metres, and these winners gain automatic entry to the final Slipper 16. The winners were Proven Valour, Postage Dew, Marauding, Midnight Fever, Christmas Tree and Tennessee Vane. Those lead-up races have an enormous record of producing the Slipper winner. Tennessee Vane did not run, while Postage Dew, Christmas Tree and Proven Valor drew wide barriers which made their task extremely difficult. Midnight Fever was the centre of a huge betting spree and went to the barrier a firm 7-2 favourite ahead of Christmas Tree, Magic Million Winner Snippets and the giant cult Marauding. Racing in the slipper and proven valid towards the outside began brilliantly in justice. A little bit slow to move at the start. Snippets began fast and so did Christmas Tree. And Tasman Dancer is scorching along the rail. Mother Duck is right up there with them in the early part, followed by Marauding. Midnight Fever threading away between runners into a prominent spot and then Dream Faith and out deep as postage due. Further back, Ligon Arms, followed by Prince Anton in justice and Celebrity Lover and boasting as last as they come through the gap onto the course proper where Mother Duck is the leader. Mother Duck in front. Front. Snippets is running second, Proven Valor third, a length and a half then to Rancho Ruler getting a beautiful run on the inside of Midnight Fever, Christmas Tree is out three deep from his wide gate and then Dream Faith followed by Tasman Dancer, further back in the field in Justice as they turn for home and then Prince Anton and Marauding is badly placed in the straight now and Mother Duck the leader, Snippets on the outside has raced up to hit the front, Snippets had shot clear coming to the 200 mark, Christmas Tree is out after him, battling on strongly Tasman Dancer, at the head of the others Rancho 
the ruler, Snippets is weakening, Christmas Tree coming at him with Tasman Dancer, now marauding, Ligon Arms and further out boasting, what a finish coming up, it's Ligon Arms and marauding, marauding won the slipper, marauding... It had to happen one Ligon day, Arms. it took them 30 years, but the New Zealanders have finally laid claim to having bred a golden slipper winner, even though it was Robert Sangster's Swetnam Stud which bred this great colt. Marauding is from a great Australian family, however, being from Biscalawi, a stakes place daughter of champion sire Biscay and the top flight Group 1 winning race mare Nunkalawi. The slip of victory was a career highlight for trainer Brian Mayfield-Smith, but for jockey Ron Quinton, substituting for suspended Jim Cassidy, it was his third slipper in four years. Congratulations are due too to the directors of New Haven Park Limited who out later reported $700,000 for a 40% interest in the cult before his first win. Here is a real stallion of the future for New Haven. Some trainers take an optimistic look to the future with the staying bred colts and aim them at the longer races for juveniles. The first of these in Sydney is the $150,000 Group 1 Sires Produce Stakes over 1,400 metres at Randwick, a race with a long history of upset results. Back in the field with Injustice, followed by Mighty Willem and boasting as last. At the 800 metres mark and Snippets went to the lead under a good hull by a little over two lengths to Marauding. A length and a half away in third place, raised the banner three deep on the outside of Tennessee Vane and Ligon Arms. A length and a half further back in the field as they near the turn, Prince Anton followed by Omnicorp. Sky chase between horses, Flotilla taking off around the outside and then Mighty Willem further back Petrero followed by Bozam and Lord Westminster as they turn for home in the sires, over the rise and snippets the leader marauding, pop the question there's a rails run there for Ligon Arms if he's good enough and Flotilla wide out is running a big race at any old price at the 200 snippets still in front marauding trying to get to him, Sky Chase is coming through behind them but snippets has booted, he's got them beaten, snippets is clear, marauding and Sky Chase can't pick him up, can he run 1400 meters I'll say can, and Snippets beats... Scott. Snippets had earlier won the inaugural running of the Magic Million race at the Gold Coast, so a victory in the Group 1 event will certainly boost the reputation of this clever Queensland bloodstock industry promotion. Snippets was ridden on this occasion by Peter Cook, his first Group 1 winner after returning from a long break caused by a major back injury. Two of the beaten Colts and the Sires were to sweep the remaining three juvenile Group 1s. I refer to Sky Chase, whom you will have undoubtedly seen run home strongly to beat all bar snippets, and Flotilla, a creditable sixth after being trap wide. On the strength of that excellent second, punter sent out Sky Chase, a warm 7-4 favourite for the McWilliam Champagne Stakes over the Randwick Mile. Sky Chase has pegged away on the fence as they come to the turn on the inside of Whiskey Supreme, followed by Mighty Willem and Flotilla. Omnicorp is taking off, Dornville is going with him, and they're both right off the track on the corner, boasting behind them. Over the rise in the Champagne and the Cloisters just led Lily Antoinette, Ligon Arms pouncing on them now. Getting a rails run is Sky Chase, if he's good enough, followed by Mighty Willem and Flotilla. The run comes for Sky Chase, he's dashed through to head the Cloisters, they've kicked away clear of Ligon Arms, followed by Omnicorp and Flotilla, but Sky Chase shot clear with 100 to go, and he's going to win the Champagne Stakes in a breeze, Sky Chase. Sky Chase came away to beat Flotilla, third the Cloisters. Sky Chase is an athletic son of the increasingly successful Windsor Park Stallion Star Way, one of the very best young stallions in New Zealand. A lower maiden going into the Group 1 mile, Sky Chase had demonstrated his class on each occasion he'd raced. With Sky Chase resting up for the spring, Flotilla was to be Sydney's representative in the hunt for the major portion of the money available for two-year-olds in Brisbane during the winter. Brian, how impressed were you with the juvenile form over the Queensland Carnival? Well, personally speaking, I thought Flotilla looked a legitimate derby cull, but I'm prepared to let the videos to the talking for me, Ian. The Queensland Turf Club Sires Produce Stakes is one of five races accorded Group 1 status for the first time for the 86-87 season. We'll pick up the action at Barrier Rise with Flotilla and the white with black diamonds and cap and red armbands at Barrier 1. Watch for the trouble he encounters at the first turn, which eventually costs him at least four lengths. On water and superb effort, showing plenty of speed in the early part. Settling down, superb effort. He's going a bit keenly. He's the joint leader with Flotilla and Mnemonic. Never too close in that bunch as well. And on water's out about four deep in the early part. Just behind them all ashore, who began nicely today. He's trailing through into a lovely trailing position. Recommendation is next on the outside, followed by Highway News, who's drifting back to about midfield. And then Navajo Girl, up running about seventh at the moment, is 
strong respect. Over on the inside is Hunter and Silver Scout. Mud Crab's getting a long way back with Lord Westminster. Smokestack a fair way back with Head for Glory and Amboise last of all. Coming up to the crossing, 700 metres to go. Superb effort, doing it pretty easily. The leader on water second, Demonic third. Followed by Recommendation, who's on the outside of Never Too Close. And then Marge Silver Scout. Flotilla running about seventh on the inside. Smokestack to the outside, making ground. Further back, Navajo Girl, Lord Westminster, Mud Crab, Amboise starting to go forward, but giving them a long start. Well in the straight, 300 metres to go. Superb effort, still the leader. He's clear, he's kicked away. He's three lengths in front of On Water. Flotilla to the outside, starting to make ground and then all ashore. Superb effort in front, he's starting to feel the pinch. He's stopping, here comes Flotilla with a great run. Flotilla race straight past Superb effort, shoots to the front and he's home and hose. Flotilla's too good for Superb effort. Flotilla's win was a milestone for Dalmasia, the high-class Sir Tristram horse who stands with Biscay at Beamer Stud in the Hunter Valley. It was most appropriate for Flotilla to be a Sires Produce winner, as his dam Gretel won the AJC Sires in 1974. Despite his triumph on Flotilla, Mark de Montford's day was shattered when QTC stewards suspended him for his ride on Knife, and Peter Cook replaced him on Flotilla in the QTC Castle Main Stakes. 400 metres to go. Our Poetic Prince is the leader. A length in front. Flotilla coming after him on the outside. Gold Trump sneaking up along the inside. Our Poetic Prince. He's all over the track like a drunken sailor. He's just in front. Gold Trump grabbed him on the inside. Hunter's flying home. Gold Trump in front. Marshall pulls the whip. Our Poetic Prince. He's on the outside rail. Flotilla coming through in the middle. This is a great go. Flotilla after Hunter. Hunter in front. Flotilla grabbed him. Oh, they hit it close. Flotilla's class Very and close. courage lifted Delmasia from sixth to second spot on the juvenile sires table behind another first crop sire Masquet who had 21 individual winners for the season. Let's now duck across the Tasman to check out the two juvenile group ones run in New Zealand. The first is the Swettenham stud Manawatu Sires Produce Stakes over 1400 metres at Awapuni. Colin Hayes almost brings off a major coup for Australia with the Swettenham entry Glorious Way. Watch for the Robert Sangster colours as they leave the gates. Racing. Way they go in the size produce and glorious way. The Australian missed it by a couple of lengths and getting back Savannah City and satisfies in the last two or three. Accountant began well from uh, reception there, followed by open terrain and flying Gemini. Glorious way showing a lot of speed to get up on the inside is followed then by Heavenly View. Their homeward bound accountant, the leader coming after at the outside. Open terrain there, followed by Glorious Way. Further back to reception, satisfied Jennifer Rush and Heavenly View and touch of silver running on too late. Open to Rain's got the lead. Australia's going to be hard. Glorious Way's gone up with Satisfy the inside there. The three. Satisfy and Glorious Way. Satisfy. Satisfy's won it. Glorious Way. While Saturday. Glorious Way was unlucky not to triumph for Swetnam, Lindsay Park and her sire Godswalk, the day belonged to Satisfy, who must go on record as one of the very cheapest Group 1 winners for many a year. His price? Just 600 New Zealand dollars. And that was double the service fee of his sire, the optimistically named top quality. Also worth $150,000, the other leading two-year-old event in New Zealand is the Radio Pacific Sires Produce Stakes, contested over 1,400 metres at Ellerslie. They straighten 450 left to go and accounted an error leader out wide at the Spyglass High Standards, asked for an effort and going well in behind them to Savannah City there, followed by Young Indian, but Spyglass in front now of the favourite High Standards, out wide a Young Indian finishing solidly there, followed by accounted inside the 200, though Spyglass is holding from Young Indian in high standards can't win. Spyglass in front from Young Indian Lunge and Spyglass a photo to Young Indian. Third Spyglass the gave another son of Sir Tristram a Group 1 winner from his first crop. A minor winner at 1600 metres, Sir Cyan hails from the family that produced Galilee and Sometime. Bill, just before we conclude the two-year-old section, there's a clip I'd like to show you. Now, this is not a Group 1 race, it's not even a Group 2, but the race is the Fern Hill Handicap, a group three over 1,600 metres, and the horse I want you to watch is Bozam. ...interested now, and look at him go. Bozam has just cruised up on the outside. He picked up five lengths in about 50 metres. He shot past Ironic Lady and said, Tana, it's all Bozam. This is what he's been needing, 1,600 metres, and look at him go to the line, Bozam. Gee, he'll be a good horse next time. Bozam won by five lengths to Ironic Lady. Bill, we all know what a great sire Zamazan is but his two-year-old group winners have been few and far between, but with his stock better with maturity, you can just imagine how good this fellow could well be. Well, he's certainly impressed me, Ian, and he's, he's so athletic and well-made too. Yep, this is true. 
Well, the Fernhill handicap has thrown up many classic horses in the past. Gallopers like Prince Darius, Persian Lyric, Gun Sin, right through to Veloso and Handy Proverb, and in my opinion, it could well have done the same with Bozan. We've already dealt with the principal Spring Cups, but there are quite a few other major Cups on both sides of the Tasman each season. Brian, your passport's been getting plenty of use lately, and uh, I believe that you're going to apply for citizenship of New Zealand. Well, Bill, it's a, it's a great place for a racing holiday, and the Auckland Cup on New Year's Day is really the people's race. At $250,000, it's the richest race in New Zealand, and Alice Lee Racecourse comes alive for it. The biggest day on the New Zealand racing calendar. For those with a New Year hangover, what a better way to spend the 1st of January than at the DB Auckland Cup. Tari Chief going towards the turn, being niggled at a little, but he's got 20 lengths to spare. In second place, Lack of Reason, Brooke Bond, then Daria's Fun, then followed Salvig, Bounty Hawk, three back to 12 gauge, then followed Royal Heights, then the Filbert being well niggled at as they come round the turn. He's got a big break, he can almost lie down and have a rest. He's in front, Kotari Chief, 15 to 20 lengths, Daria's Fun, then followed by in third place, Lack of Reason, 12 gauge, Royal Heights. Kotari Chief starting to stagger, he's got 12, 15 lengths clear though. Daria's Fun then followed 12. 12 gauge as he goes towards the post. Kotari Chief, he's got 15, 20. They're never going to get him. What a ride. Kotari Chief has got it well. One second place, 12 gauge out wide. Royal Heights, the fight is only for the miners. Kotari Chief wins it. He bolted in 12 gauge. Kotari Chief is a stayer in more ways than one. His most important success coming well into his eighth year. But there was no doubting his superiority on the day. Robert Cadigan's daring ride left daylight to claim second as they put the 3,200 metres behind them in a slick 316.63. The modern new sales complex at Caraca near Auckland will be operational from 1988. So this year saw the last Wellington Cup Carnival run at Trentham in conjunction with the National Yearling Sale. The 1987 edition of the Foster's Wellington Cup left the crowd stunned with a near 50 to 1 shot winning and a slogging finish. Packed up now, only about 10 lengths from first to last. They race to the turn in the cup. And Lord Jekyll will lead them in from Fort Cheval. Right on their hammer now, regimental march. Blavinsky's right there. Then Rastus, they were followed by Double Lang. Further back in the field then to Whittle and finishing on the, just battling a bit then is Blimey. And down the very outside, Eastern Joy. Regimental march went to the lead. 200 to go. Rastus trying hard. So is Blavinsky. They're followed by Mildew. Here's Lou unwinding wide. Eastern Joy too far away. Rastus, the outside, has got to the lead. Restus Blavinsky's fighting it hard and here's Lou finishing well. Restus on the outside as Restus has won the cup. Close second Blavinsky. No one was more surprised at the son of Super Grey's win than his trainer Danny Walker. Marie Linden was more than a little shocked as well. She discarded Rastus as a cup mount after riding him on the first day of the carnival. And Kotari Chief, the Auckland Cup hero, he failed to beat a runner home. Not so many years ago, the Avondale Cup was regarded as a lead-up race for the 3200 metre cups. But no more. Carrying a Group 1 status and sponsorship to the tune of 200,000 New Zealand dollars, the Lion Red Avondale Cup has emerged as New Zealand's major middle distance handicap. They're followed on the inside our Sophia. There goes a bit like and now he's swamping them round on the outside. 600 metres out in the cup. Joel is next and Nick back last. Now is still Eastern Joy and alongside of these two. Bounty Hawk got squeezed well back also with Barusha. Into the straight. 400 metres to go and Salvig's taken over and shot away with Cooksley. It's got a three length break. Royal Heights is making a bid. Fort Chevelle Cosmetique behind these but Salvig's got them in trouble now. 300 metres to go. Away by five lengths on Royal Heights. Fort Chevelle Beaver Boy putting in a late run but Salvig stolen the race, kicks right away at 100 metres out. In second place, Royal Heights trying valiantly with Beaver Boy and 12 gauge. Salvig wins it easily. Second at the line, 12 gauge. A fitting Royal winner Heights this time around was gallant mare Solvig, who picked up her third Group 1 to add to earlier triumphs in the New Zealand Oaks at 3 and the Double Brown 1600 at 4. This daughter of imposing has won 400,000 New Zealand dollars in a splendid career on the track and remains that stallion's best racetrack representative. Drama and the Perth Cup have often been close companions in the past, and the 101st running of the race in 1987 was no exception. 
On the outside, Lonely Nights, followed by Royal on the outside, Rocket Racers taken off now. Royal Sharif the inside from Gypsy Frolic. Buckle Harbour's tacking on behind Royal Rocket Racer. They were followed by Pliancy Alpha went around the outside. Then Hall Packs and Meads followed by Northern Fine. Ambitious Task, Nippy's Dream, Gypsy Frolic is gone from Pat Moss, King Matthias. And well back on the corner now, Red Martell and Star Joe Rocket Racer at the 350 by 2 over Puckle Harbour. Three away to Royal Sharif around the bell for win, followed by Pliancy, then came on the outside, Hallback image, but 200 to go at Rocket Racer. He's five in front from Puckle Harbour, followed by Royal Sharif, Hallback image and Alpha win, but it's a one horse affair. Rocket Racer's eight in front, he's ten in front. He's going to win from Puckle Harbour and Royal Sharif. Rocket Sharif. Racer may have been memorable for the ease of his win or for the fact that he gave veteran jockey John Miller back-to-back -back wins in the West's biggest two-miler. But the most dramatic aspect of the race was the near collapse of the Laurie Connell-owned four-year-old immediately after the race. Veterinary opinion put Rocket Racer's distress state down to severe heat exhaustion, and it was several hours before he was declared out of danger. As it was, we didn't see this exciting young stayer for the remainder of the season. Ian, you've had more than a little drama surrounding your big cup in Sydney. Yes, you're so right in that regard, Brian. After the AJC derby, most were conceding the Sydney Cup to Meyer card. But three races after Meyer card's derby, the running of the chairman's handicap added a new dimension to cup discussions. Masters has the lead over Zamboanga and Reckless Tradition as they make the turn. Silver Award and out of sight are handy. Major drivers going through along the rails and getting a dream run, but wide out, Reckless Tradition went to the lead. Rastus making a run. Major drivers bailed up for that inside run, but is now getting clear Major Drive. And Major Drive has raced through to hit the lead from Rastus and Silver Award in there, followed by Reckless Tradition and out of sight, but Major Drive shot clear inside the 100 metre pole. Silver Award and Rastus giving chase, but Major Drive has beaten Silver Award. Rastus third, then out of sight. Come Sydney Cup Day, Maya Card, as you might expect, was all the rage at around two to one on. Bookmakers were more than a little wary, however, that part owner Kerry Packer would launch one of his much publicised plungers on Major Drive and opened him at seven to two. Strangely, the money didn't eventuate and Major Drive eased to double his opening quote. Stewards took the mildly sensational step of warning Major Drive's jockey Greg Hall about the betting fluctuations while the cup contenders milled around behind the start. Off and running in the Sydney Cup of 87, commercial balance was allowed to fall out of the gate and went straight back to the tail of the field. Peckham Aguess also went straight back to the rear and Plume Dorvale and Linda Ballantyne bounded out in front and led clearly on settling down over rising fear. Out of sights in third place, about a length and a half then to commercial balance improving rapidly along the fence for led by Silver Award and then Rastees and Lord Reams about midfield on the turn into the straight the first time. Maya Card is now being allowed to stride up three deep by De Montfort. Silver Award hard ridden at the 800 mark and further back major drive out. Well you know we weren't all that confident I've got to be honest about it. I, I honestly didn't think that I could beat Maya Card and I suppose 90% of the, or 95% of the people would have you know, I would have thought that he was, you know, too good for us, but the thing Lord Reams out of sight. Maya Card, three deep, is coming into it strongly. Commercial balance between horses, and then Major Drive Rasties on the fence as they turn for home, but around the corner, Maya Card straightened up about four lengths off the lead, and here he comes now. Rising Fear hit the lead on top of the rise, but the three-year-old Maya Card has gobbled him up in a stride. Major Drive on the outside, looking a danger, however. Maya Card in front, De Montfort's gone for the whip. Major Drive is coming at him, they're going to fight it out. Maya Card in front, Major Drive inch by inch is wearing him down, Major Drive coming home better and Major Drive got up to win the Sydney Cup. A half the win must have been particularly satisfying for trainer John Maher with Major Drive having missed a start in the Melbourne Cup and Drought having failed to strike in the autumn. Over in South Australia it was West End Adelaide Cup time and the day belonged to the polished Kiwi lady jockey Marie Linden and Lord Reams. Lord Ream, she's given this every chance and over on the outside, Hall Strong. Overland Boy goes up sharply and Bourbon Boy joins in as Cativo sweeps to the lead. They've completed a full circuit back where they started inside the 800 now and it's Lord Ream's poking through with on the outside Overland Boy and also there Bourbon Boy and King's Pleasure and Hall Strong. They make a line of four. Bourbon Boy settling just behind them for the run for home. Enchanteur is coming into it quickly. Cativo giving ground 
Camden, then came Camden Poacher. They were followed by Coda Sill and Storm Joy and Pika Magas. Lord Reams has hit the front at the 400 metre mark. Bourbon Boy gets up on her inside and comes after her. The favourite Bourbon Boy hits the front with Lord Reams. They were followed by Overland Boy and King's Pleasure. Then on Chanteur down the outside, it's Lord Reams a half in front. Bourbon Boy can't pick him up. It's Lord Reams clear of Bourbon Boy. This young lady, Marie Linden, is set for racing history. A two-mile cup is in her grasp. Can he stay, Lord Reams? Ha! He'd stay till closing time. Listen to the crowd. They've gone mad. Lord Marie Reams Linden's copybook ride on Lord Reams gave her her second Group 1 success in Australia. The first had come on Mr Trick in the 1985 Forex Cup. The Adelaide Cup form is often a reliable guide to the Brisbane Cup. Another 3,200 metre handicap run at Eagle Farm exactly three weeks later. This year, Lord Reams and Bourbon Boy were flown to Brisbane on the strength of their Adelaide Cup efforts. But on this occasion, the South Australian form counted for nothing, as a seven-year-old New Zealand mare named Limitless made Brisbane Cup history. We trust the 1986-87 Australasian racing year has served you well. Used with just a touch of foresight, it should provide you with valuable clues to the major races of the coming season. At the very least, it will provide you with a lasting reference of some of the great moments in the history of racing in this part of the world. But there's one thing of which I'm certain. Whatever the new season brings, this last racing year will be a tough act to follow.